Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar, Managing Hallucinations in Your LLM Apps. My name is Matt Brown, and I will be your moderator today. One of my main jobs at Single Store is to organize these weekly AI webinars, two per week, demoing data and AI use cases, new tools, and technologies. I post about our webinars every week, so if these topics are interesting to you, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn to stay in the loop. I also love to hear your feedback or any ideas on topics that you'd love to see in our future sessions. So speaking of future sessions, if you click to the next slide, you'll see that next Monday, we are presenting how to build Gen AI applications on MySQL data. Come join us to learn how Single Store's MySQL compatibility can power real-time data analytics, upgraded application performance, and innovative new Gen AI uh, capabilities. We have a live demo plan, so if this looks interesting to you, go ahead and RSVP right now. We've got a QR code on the screen. You can take a photo or screenshot of that. We also have that bit.ly Gen AI on MySQL data URL. I will post that in the chat in a minute, and I hope to see you on Monday. Getting back to today's topic, we would love for you to participate in the discussion throughout the session. We have a Zoom Q&A button at the bottom of your console, and we also have an internal mission statement to answer 100% of audience questions, even if that means following up with some folks via email after the session, um, given sometimes we have hundreds of questions during these popular sessions. Ask away, but make sure that you include your email and your name in the question. We won't be answering any anonymous questions today. We'd also love for you to try out today's technology. In fact, if you try it out today, you will be entered for a chance to win brand new AirPods Pros. Um, simply click that link that's on your screen. I'll put that in the chat in a minute. It's the Bitly Hallucinations Raffle. You can take a QR code photo there as well. Very simple to participate. Just visit that link and log in. You may already know that Single Store has had a free trial for many years. We only recently unveiled a new entirely free shared tier. Um, so we'll talk about that in a little bit as well, but very simple to participate. If you, if you don't have an account, just sign up for the free one. Um, if you do have an account, just log in. Either way, um, those that visit that link and log in will be eligible and will announce the AirPods winner by the end of today's session. So I'll, I'll quickly introduce our speakers today. today. Um, the face you probably recognize, Akmal Chowdhury. He is a senior technical evangelist at Single Store. He is a proficient, highly proficient in data, AI, machine learning, a regular speaker at our webinars and sessions. Highly recommend you follow him on Medium. He's an excellent blogger. Um, and then our other speaker, you may remember that our original speaker plan for today was Vanija Jane, machine learning engineer uh, and leader at Amazon. However, we've had a pretty hectic little weekend as she went into labor early on Friday. Happy to report that both mommy and baby are happy and healthy. Given the circumstances, her husband, Aman Chadha, has graciously volunteered to jump in and present in her stead. He is equally proficient in this topic as he leads a team of scientists and managers that are responsible for natural language processing, vision and speech models at AWS. Um, Innovation Center. So very excited to have him and Akmal. I will turn things over to Akmal. I believe you have the floor first. Great. Well, thank you very much, uh, Matt. And thank you all for uh, joining today, wherever you are. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. So as always, I check my clock at this time and it's just gone 6 p.m. So I am based in London. And uh, so let's uh, get moving forward there we go introduction so i've just got a couple of slides and then i'll hand over to aman okay so a couple of words about single story b so just a quick word there so matt mentioned the mysql uh webinar we have planned uh I, actually i realize that i'm presenting it so it's so on mine um however uh this week also uh, i'm doing another webinar with my colleague abby where we are doing an introduction to single store DB. So Matt mentioned the free tier and we'll be going over the free tier, some of the sort of features and capabilities, things like spaces, for example, the gallery, um, using notebooks 
and uh, essentially it's a beginner's kind of guide if you like and so if you're interested and you know maybe you don't have any experience with single store db you want to gain some proficiency and some learn some basics and how to get started and kind of thing that would be great to do okay so that's again mentioned on our web page and uh for events and okay, so please sign up for that okay so we'll uh, we'll work through that so in the meantime then <clears throat> just two slides that i have so firstly uh, what is single story B? So it is a originally a database management system. Go back in time a few years, used to be called MemSQL, okay? And both the, the product and the company were called MemSQL. Mem, uh, emphasizing the fact that it was in memory, OLTP, okay? Very fast. Subsequently added columnar storage and the ability to do OLAP, okay? So working across vast quantities of data, running operations, some min, max, average count, these kind of things. And then we have a patented single kind of universal storage format table, okay? One mechanism, if you like, to handle both of these types of data. Now, the thing is other products can do similar things, but you have to use multiple technologies in order to achieve the same result. So single store is pretty unique in the industry. And so it can handle both of these requirements and do a lot else as well, okay? As shown by this particular slide here, okay? So just a couple of points here. So at its heart here, this is the kind of 30,000 foot view, if you like. So we have this uh, universal storage, okay? The ability to handle both the OLAP and the OLTP. And then we have a variety of ways to get data in. So if you've attended previous webinars, you know that uh, I've used Kafka quite a lot, okay? Uh, we've covered Spark, but not recently. And I think last time we did, it was about a year ago. So Matt might, this might be something we ought to think about, maybe doing another one with uh, with Spark. But if you're working with Spark, uh, you know, it can do query pushdown, uh, use it for machine learning, big data processing, and then other sources of uh, data, you know, maybe sort of S3, Hadoop, HDFS, if you like. And then I think this animation here is showing the kind of uh, parallel ingest. So we have this concept of pipelines that can consume data from these variety of sources and be able to ingest them in parallel at scale. And you can get lots of data into the product very, very quickly. Uh, now we uh, work on the three major cloud providers. Okay. But today we are very much focused on uh, AWS. And indeed, the uh, starter session that we've got planned for later this week, which I'm doing with my colleague, Abby, will be looking at AWS as well, okay? And that's the platform that we offer the free tier on at the moment. Uh, you can run on-prem as well. We have customers doing that. And there's a Docker container as well, if you want to try that. But seriously, uh, as Matt uh, uh, will post those uh, links into the chat there, uh, you know, if you sign up, it's a web-based environment. There's nothing to install locally, zero kind of risk, okay, in terms of uh, having to install any software. So everything is browser-based and it's a great way to get started and give you the opportunity to learn uh, the product from that perspective. Now, um, historically, I've mentioned kind of database management system. So at its heart, yes, it's relational technology, but there's other data types as well. This kind of multi-model, you know, in terms of geospatial, time series, we've covered these in past webinars as well. There is the uh, Lucene full-text search engine built in as well. And uh, it also has JSON capability, which has been there for quite some time, actually. And that's got even better with uh, single store Kai, which is now GA. So if you come from the MongoDB world, single store Kai gives you MongoDB compatibility. Uh, so one interesting point to mention again is that we are both MySQL wire compatible and MongoDB wire compatible. Vectors, that's the hot topic. One point there is that Single store has had vector support since 2017. Okay, so it's not something we just added recently because it happens to be a, a hot and uh, you know in demand kind of technology uh, because of the Gen AI. Uh, but we haven't sat on our laurels. We have added a whole bunch of interesting things such as ANN search, for example, a specific vector type, and uh, some of those are covered in the slides today. And I did a, a webinar on that not so long ago. Now, if you look at this and see it in the kind of the big picture kind of context, there's other things as well, okay? So in terms of real-time decisions, IoT, dynamic experiences, in terms of applications, and then real-time analytics 
ad hoc queries, dashboards. And again, if you've attended our, event, our webinars previously, you know that I use Metabase a lot uh, simply because it's a jar file, the free version, just download it. And within a couple of minutes, you can be creating these visualizations, pie charts, and, and so on. Uh, the notebook environment, if you're familiar with uh, Python and say Matplotlib, Plotly, Plotly Express, these tools, again, uh, awesome way to create visualizations very, very quickly. Uh, now, see this all in context. So no longer is the product just a database management system, but you can see there's a great sort of ecosystem around this. So we refer to it now as a data platform. And that's the key sort of change, I think, in, in the recent past, because essentially it's giving you a variety of means to work with data. Uh, it's not just about database technology anymore, but all of the tools and uh, uh, supporting technologies that go with that and the variety of ways that you can interface with it. Okay, so at this point in time, then I will stop and uh, I will hold, hand over to Aman. So let me stop the share there. Okay, and I will drop down and uh, go mute myself and uh, uh, get into the Q&A. Okay, so if you have questions there, uh, I'll see you there in just a moment then. Okay, Aman, over to you, sir. Awesome. Thank you so much, Afmal and Brown. Le uh, Matt, uh, let me share my screen. Hopefully this works well. And le let me know if you guys can see my screen. There we go. That looks good, though. You might need to click the slideshow button. Yes, got it. Perfect. Yes. So I'll get started. Awesome. Great to see you guys. And uh, looking forward to an exciting webinar. We are going to be touching upon a very interesting topic today, probably one of the hottest topics in AI right now, generative AI in particular, hallucinations, and how single store uh, DB powers, uh, you know, our rack technology and, you know, the, the the best way to get there. We touch upon the do's and don'ts and the best practices and, you know, why single store is the best choice uh, in enabling this technology. So on the left, I have uh, a, an outline of what we're about to cover today. So we're going to go over a quick intro. I'm going to talk about what hallucination is and what leads to hallucination. So I'll touch upon that briefly to give you guys some context and background. Then we'll talk about mitigation strategies and we'll delve into RAG, uh, which, like I just mentioned, is you know one of the best answers to the hallucination problem and how we can uh, develop a system with single store DB to mitigate uh, you know, some of these issues. We'll also touch upon ANN indexes and search, similarity search in particular, which is again a very hot topic. We will also talk about vector data type, which is what Akmal just uh, referred to as well. And this is again a unique capability that single store DB provides uh, out of the box. So that's uh, pretty exciting as well. Uh, and then lastly, uh, you know, we'll talk about the free tier, which uh, Matt and Akmal also uh, talked about. Uh, I think this is phenomenal and it's great for you guys to get started. Some great free credits as well that I'll talk about. Uh, and also the hybrid search uh, feature that single store DB enables. Uh, and then lastly, we have a demo plan for you guys. Uh, so this is how we're gonna structure today's presentation. And uh, you know, just formally introducing myself, uh, some of you guys may know me uh, from LinkedIn and other platforms. So I currently manage generative AI at AWS. I have a team of uh, scientists and managers, and we work on all kinds of different uh, AI models, particularly generative AI models. Uh, I have a background in multimodal AI from Stanford, where I did my second master's. Uh, and uh, I've been at Apple earlier, Amazon, Alexa, NVIDIA, Qualcomm. And uh, I write a lot of uh, AI content, particularly primers, uh, AI primers, generative AI primers. So you'll uh, notice some of that on my website, aman.ai. All right, with that, let's get started with the introduction. So hallucination and what is it exactly? What leads to hallucination? So let's talk about a bit of that. And, uh, you, know, uh, you know, let's start with the example on the right that I have. This is probably, you know, this is uh, like the canonical example of, uh, you know, AI systems and what can go wrong if you don't deploy them right with the right technologies. Um, so uh, Google announced BARD recently, uh, you know, five, six months ago. And uh, what happened was there was a factually incorrect statement talking about the James Webb uh, telescope. And uh, 
that was a result of hallucination from Bard, and that led to a hundred billion drop in valuation on one particular day uh, when this was announced for Google. So this is the impact of you know what AI systems can bring about if not uh, you know structured in the right way and the right guardrails set them in place, powered by the right technologies, including vector databases and RAG, which we'll touch upon today. But this factual incorrectness, which is hallucination, uh, is, uh, you know, it, it sounds grammatically correct and plausible if you look at what we have here on the slide, but, uh, you know, it's factually incorrect and it's difficult to identify a lot of these, uh, you know, nuances just looking at the example. Uh, and that's because generative AI systems, you know, particularly LLMs are great at, uh, you know, uh, giving you, you know, an output that kind of resonates and makes sense overall. Uh, but the devils are in the uh, the devils in the details here, so it's important to make sure that uh, you know this, uh, the right systems in place. Um, but uh, this is also seen with uh, GPT and a bunch of different models. It has nothing you know to specifically do with Google. Uh, this is an artifact of the process and how the models are trained. Uh, so you know this is an area that we definitely uh, you know want to make sure is you know looked into as we deploy these systems in the industry. Uh, you know, you don't want systems to be offering you the, you know, the wrong information and factually incorrect. And, you know, this case, it could have major applications down the line. So, so this is the uh, entire uh, premise of hallucination and, you know, the, what it exactly is and, you know, the kind of adverse effects it can bring about. Over to why this happens. So there's various different, uh, you know, uh, underlying reasons and, you could have one of these happening or a combination, very difficult to tease out, uh, you know, the exact reason uh, behind a model hallucinating, but there's a lot of work uh, being done and this is an ongoing research area, a lot of traction in the field. Like I said, probably one of the hottest topics, uh, you know, in generative AI right now. So so let's go over quickly uh, the, the four major reasons, right? So. When you train models, you want to make sure that there's enough representation as far as various different aspects and subpopulations of the input, the training data is concerned, right? You want the model to have seen diverse data from various different angles and perspective, whether it's history or, you know, different kinds of subjects, right? Law or depending on what the downstream use case is. But if you're, say, building a model like GPT-3, which is a world model, the model needs to know a whole lot of different things about the world and various different perspectives and subjects and areas and, uh, because you know people probe these models uh, you know uh, with all kinds of different questions right so if if the data isn't well represented uh, you know we'll have uh, issues there the model kind of understands certain areas pretty well it can talk about geography but can't give you a great answer about history that is uh, you know likely if we haven't looked into these uh, you know nuances and aspects when training so that's the insufficient training data part uh, coming to the model overfitting part um, this is again a very uh, you know uh, big issue that happens during as we train uh, these models. Um, the model basically learns to memorize the training set and overfits to the training set. So when you ask it a question at runtime, that is not uh, exactly what it saw during training. It's unable to generalize uh, to uh, you know areas and subjects and you know make correlations across various different areas. Uh, you know, as well, uh, because it has overfit uh, during training. So that's the other issue that happens. Um, and then we have inadequate supervision as well. So supervision is basically data annotation, right? So humans annotate, uh, you know, uh, data in a lot of cases, especially with supervised fine tuning and the, the alignment part of uh, model training, not as much the pre-training part, but supervision is involved in the other aspects, which are, again, very critical to training LLMs and that is uh, essentially the the magical power of a lot of these LLMs like ChatGPT and you know giving you know folks great answers because they've been aligned well and you know uh, supervised fine tuned as well. But if these annotations aren't done uh, right, if there's uh, you know uh, gaps there in terms of correctness, especially uh, that will lead to hallucination because the models taught to do something that isn't quite correct. It prefers certain answers over another, even though that shouldn't be the case, for example. So the supervision here is pretty important. And lastly, we've got the knowledge cutoff, uh, which is uh, also a very important area. You probe chat, chat GPT about an event, especially world event news, uh, you know, pick up a topic that just happened recently and ask chat GPT about it. It'll tell you that it might be beyond its knowledge cutoff. 
Um, so that is another area where, you know, if uh, in certain cases, if it's able to figure out that you're talking about a topic that it doesn't have a clue about, it would, uh, you know, give you a response saying, hey, I might not know this because, you know, it's beyond my, uh, the cutoff date for my training. But in certain other cases, it does try to answer the question rather than saying, I don't know. And uh, the, uh, the, the response could be hallucinated because it's trying its best, but uh, the, based on the knowledge and its weights, uh, it isn't able to come up with something that's actually accurate. So these are kind of the four broad areas uh, in terms of you know, hallucination, uh, the sources of hallucination. And next up, let's talk about mitigation strategies. Now, there are various different ways to mitigate hallucination. Like I mentioned earlier, this is a very hot area and a uh, lot of traction, right? So let's talk about pre-generation and post-generation, right? So there's two different major aspects. Uh, pre-generation, there's prompting methods, and there's a bunch of them that are listed here on the slide, chain of verification, optimization by prompting, system to attention, uh, emotion prompt, step back and rephrase and respond. These are very popular techniques right now. Um, uh, but the thing with prompting is it gets you only gets you so far. And ideally, what you want to do is be able to, uh, you know, coming back to my BARD uh, example that I spoke about earlier, you want to be able to fact check. You want to be able to look into uh, the, the various different claims, uh, you know, every uh, statement at the output of the LLM makes and be able to gauge what makes sense and what doesn't. And that is essentially uh, powered by, a good part of that is powered by retrieval augmented generation, which is what we're gonna talk about today and how you know, a vector database like single store is you know, the, the best way to implement something of that sort and the kind of features, especially single store offers that we can leverage in that process. So RAG obviously has a bunch of different types now. In fact, there's a lot more here. Uh, I didn't want to clutter up my slide, but there's a lot of fraction in uh, in the in the RAG area as well. So there's obviously the vanilla RAG paper, uh, and then you know came uh, then came uh, Active RAG, which does a web-based lookup as your as as the mock doing RAG. Uh, there's also multimodal RAG where you can you know combine text and image aspects, uh, and like I said, bunch more uh, that have been coming out recently, and then. Also, want to touch briefly on the post-generation piece. There's also methods that uh, you know the, the there's ways to uh, do a lot of this mitigation after uh, generating uh, and fact checking uh, is obviously uh, you know uh, one way to get there. Uh, human in the loop is uh, you know a prime uh, way to implement this, but obviously comes with cost. Uh, knowledge bases, uh, you can uh, integrate knowledge graphs and uh, various different other forms of, uh, you know, traditional databases, SQL databases, for example, and others uh, to be able to retrieve, uh, you know, a lot of the uh, data and the factual claims in these databases uh, and compare and contrast what the LLM is trying to say. Uh, preference alignment is also one method, but this is an upcoming area of research uh, in terms of using this for mitigating hallucination. It's already being used to align models, but utilizing it for mitigating hallucination is an area that's being looked into uh, to kind of model alignment in a different sense. Um, but like I said, uh, you know, RAG is, uh, you know, the number one method at this point to be able to mitigate hallucination. So that's going to be our focus for today. And I just wanted to lay out all of the different techniques for you guys to have, you know, a good amount of context in other areas as well. So, you know, you understand the landscape in terms of what people use to mitigate hallucination. All right, getting started with RAG. Now, um, so what we have with RAG uh, here is an overview of the process. So this is a four-step process, uh, just at a top level. And the first step basically involves, you know, taking in the prompt and embedding that, right? And this is done with an encoding model. Uh, and there's various ways to get there. In fact, in our demo, we're gonna talk about a particular model and how we can create embeddings and then do matching with uh, ANN-based search with single store. And so we'll touch upon that as well later in the demo. Uh, but first you embed your prompt, and then what you do is you get your data set that you wanna actually uh, you know, have the model uh, retrieve as part of RAG. So you wanna get that data and be able to chunk it. Uh, figure out the right boundaries for your data, right? To, to chunk it in the most efficient manner possible and then embed those chunks as well. 
right, individually. So each chunk will have an embedding. And then these embeddings are essentially what gets stored in single store DB, right? And then uh, as part of step three, what you want to do is you want to take your input prompt that's embedded. You want to take your chunks one by one, and you want to figure out where the similarity, right? So that's broadly what we're looking to do. But an intelligent way to get there is by using approximate nearest neighbor search, ANN search, rather than exact nearest neighbor search, right? Like KNN, for example, is exact. And there's obviously various different methods for ANN and the single store implements, some of the best ones. So, you know, we'll, and we'll touch upon that in the demo as well again. Um, but ANN by search is what's, uh, you know, uh, utilized here because you want to retrieve the top K entries that resonate or match with the, with the input that was offered to the model, right? And then lastly, what you want to do is you want to retrieve this top K and feed it into the prompt of the model so that it has context. And this, this expanded prompt is how we like to call it, uh, is essentially what the model then uses to craft a response. So, and this is the response that you basically retrieve or receive from the model with, uh, with mitigated hallucination. Why? Because it has additional context, because it looked up the, the back end, the, the store, uh, in this case, the, the, uh, the data embedded in the single store database to be able to utilize all of that context and generate you something that's more consistent and coherent and accurate. So that's the, the roughly the process in terms of RAG. And there's, like I said, various different ways to take this to the next level. You can utilize the internet as well and you know retrieve data, embed that, and then uh, do a lot of these comparisons. And this flavor of RAG is called active RAG. And so there's a bunch of different variants, multiple RAG as well that we spoke about earlier. Now, coming to what, you know, let's delve into these areas, right? And the four uh, different steps that we touched about, let's zoom into some of these a little bit. So what is vector search, right? And why do we require something of this sort? Now, this is a technology that has been, uh, you know, at the frontier of, uh, you know, generative AI, uh, not just on the tech side with LLMs, but also on the multimodal side with, uh, you know, other uh, diffusion models and such. And well, let's let's touch upon, uh, you know, what this, uh, you know, concept is and what kind of applications it unlocks, right? And this is, like I said, the basis of what, enables vector storage in, uh, you know, databases uh, like single store and, uh, you know, and in a way enables the rack technology as well. So vector search is basically a method of, you know, going through a database and uh, using uh, vectors, uh, you know, which are essentially, uh, uh, you know, an, uh, an array of numbers, floating point numbers in particular, to be able to represent entities and make, make comparisons, right? And that's how you enable that search by filtering uh, these entries that uh, you know, have a reasonable match with the input that you offer, right? So the input is obviously a query. And then you figure out ent uh, entries within the database that have that reasonable match. And the reasonable part is obviously set with a particular threshold in mind. And we'll touch upon that as well in the demo. Uh, I'm just trying to set up, you know, the, a lot of these various different aspects that we're going to practically also look into uh, via the demo. But um, but overall, it's all about finding entities that are related. That is the gist of, you know, the entire idea. And a lot of this is done in high dimensional spaces, uh, you know, because vectors need not be, uh, you know, uh, pretty constrained in terms of their dimensions. We have vectors uh, with thousands of dimensions as well. Uh, preferred for a lot of you know nuanced and complex tasks um, and uh, which is why vector databases are you know uh, key at this point right being able to uh, store a lot of these with the right methods product quantization a lot of these uh, technologies and enabling search through hierarchical navigable small words for example hnsw is another important area and all a lot of this is uh, what we already have available out of the box uh, with vector databases like single store so a lot of this technology is, uh, you know, essential and readily available. Uh, so that's the one of the superpowers uh, that you know gets unlocked when you have the right backend, like single store in this case. Um, now these vectors, uh, like I said, right, the entities, input entities, could be data of any type. Uh, you know, with multimodal rack, for example, you could have text and images. Uh, you know, but there's nothing limiting. Uh, you know, as to any particular type of modality, you could have audio, you could have any other type of data as well. Uh, you know, videos, time series data, you know, what have you. So that's the part of this. It's that's the versatility and the broad applicability here. 
And applications, uh, there's a bunch of them, you know, mostly retrieval oriented, so semantic search, recommender systems. Uh, and RAG, uh, which we're going to talk about in a little more detail, is one of the most important, uh, you know, applications of vector search. All right. Awesome. So next up, what we want to talk about is how uh, Single Store enables a lot of this technology that we just laid the groundwork for. Now, on this slide, what you have here is, uh, you know, a SQL query. Uh, that you can run uh, with single store DB and the way it implements a particular dot product operator. And this, the magic here is that with this operator is how you retrieve, uh, you know, these related entities, right? That we just talked about in the, in the prior slide, that vector search capability. So what you want to do is you want to run this, you know, so in this case, the query, the select query here, uh, retrieve the top five, uh, you know, similar faces, uh, you know, for given an input query. Uh, and these faces are embedded with a model called as FaceNet, but could be any model out there. You know, we're not limited in that sense. Uh, you know, any, like I said, not even the model, but also the modality it could be text, it could be images. In this case, it's faces, so it's images probably, but you could have, you know, all kinds of different data. And then what uh, this query basically does is it retrieves, uh, you know, the top five in this case because they're limiting by five, and these are closest matches, right? So this is the uh, ANN-based search that we're carrying about, trying to find, you know, the top five uh, entries in the databases that are most relevant to the input image or the query image, right? And not just that, you also get uh, the retrieved uh, score as well as part of this, uh, uh, you know, query and. That is essentially the similarity between your input with the uh, the retrieved elements, right? So you can utilize the score in various different ways and a lot of research in that direction as well. Uh, you know, thresholding it, uh, you know, in the right manner, static thresholds and dynamic thresholds and what have you. But uh, the point here is that a lot of the, the magic here is enabled by, you know, the, the unique offerings that we have here in this case. It's a uh, quick dot product calculation and uh, retrieval of, uh, you know, the closest matches. So uh, you, can, you can get this done in a jiffy and, you know, be able to make a lot of these comparisons so efficiently. All right. So vector search, uh, uh, you know, like uh, Matt and Akmal were touching upon earlier, is it's a technology that has existed for a while. And single store has been at the frontier of a lot of this technology. Uh, but, uh, you know, another thing that Akmal mentioned was, uh, you know, we haven't uh, rested on our laurels and we've constantly figured out ways to innovate and, you know, up the bar. Uh, so 2017, uh, you know, uh, back at that point, uh, you know, vector databases, you know, used uh, vector resources stored as blobs. A binary large object, uh, you know, was uh, how, you know, that was what well, that was a preferred mechanism at that point. And there were two, uh, you know, uh, ways to get there, right, in terms of uh, utilizing these vectors. There was dot product and there was utility and uh, distance of the me measure. We talk about these as well in a little more detail and the various different measures that are available now and not limited just by utility and distance, for example. And dot product, there's also various different alternatives. Um, and then people did exact KNN search, uh, which was also another thing that I touched upon earlier, exact versus approximate. And a lot of this was powered by SQL. Um, so, you know, the, the response time or the latency was another uh, big concern. Uh, you know, milliseconds is what we needed uh, roughly in that range. Uh, but that stuff is way more faster now, especially with uh, dedicated databases that store vectors, vector databases. Uh, and, uh, you know, so, and because a lot of these applications that you see deployed in, in, in production utilizes technology at the back end, right? So you want to make sure it's real time, it's fast, it's interactive, right? Uh, you, you can't be feeding in a prompt to chat GPT and, you know, waiting, uh, you know, uh, several minutes just for it to look up the various different components and be able to give you a good response. So. But yeah, fast forward to 2022, ChatGPT came along and uh, revolutionized, uh, you know, uh, you know, AI for us, and that led to the birth of generative AI. And uh, there's been a lot of uh, movement since then, obviously. Uh, and then 2024 uh, come today, uh, you have ANN search, various different implementations, and uh, you know, each with its own, uh, you know, trade-offs, recall versus latency is usually what we look at as we make these selections. And again, a lot of the popular implementations are already available through single store. So that's another thing that, uh, you know, it unlocks. 
And the vector type is the other thing which we will also touch upon in a coming slide, um, talking about how there's a dedicated type uh, for vectors and what that unlocks for us, uh, right, via a single stroke. So now here, uh, next up here, we have an overview of why we want to use single stroke for vector, vector search. And, uh, you know, I've been mentioning bits and pieces about the nuances, the details that single store DB unlocks for vector search. And obviously there's a bunch of providers out there, right? But, you know, uh, there's various different aspects uh, of what makes for, for uh, you know, something to be engaging and efficient in this domain, especially as you have in real time interactive applications. And in generative AI in particular, you want a lot of this technology to be uh, to, to scale out because you know there's going to be data that has unprecedented scale. We're not even talking terabytes, it's petabytes and further beyond. And to be able to mine a lot of that data and find, you know, like we mentioned or uh, talked earlier, uh, the approximate nearest neighbors and such, you want it to scale out, you want, so that's the first aspect, right? So being able to scale. Uh, that is essentially, uh, you know, one of the most important uh, dimensions that we want to optimize along and be to be able to offer something that, uh, you know, uh, is able to offer a great experience for the end user. So that's the scale out part. And next up, we've got SQL, uh, you know, having first class support for SQL is very important. And like we just saw earlier, we have uh, inbuilt data types and, you know, dot product operators and whatnot. A lot of, you know, that uh, special magic is also present. So along with obviously the traditional SQL syntax. So that's the other aspect. A transactional, you want your database to be transactional and ana analytical. So you uh, you want that hybrid, uh, HTAP is what we call it, hybrid transactional and analytical processing. You want both sets of both different flavors, data processing to be present. Uh, and then vector and text search is another thing. And we'll touch upon that as well. The vector uh, search uh, aspect we talked about. Text search is the traditional search, the keyword based or also called as lexical matching. And fuse both, both of that together is you know, what uh, leads to hybrid search, which is what single store offers. And our demo is powered by hybrid search as well. And uh, this is again, uh, the underlying, the, it's the heart of the RAG system. Uh, this is what enables RAG in the first place. So we will touch upon that a little bit. And lastly, putting all of this together is what you know, uh, single store unlocks for you. Uh, so, you know, all of these different capabilities is, you know, uh, what we need to deliver uh, that awesome experience, uh, you know, be it whatever app you're looking to build or a, uh, is a web app or even, uh, you know, an iOS based app, for example, powered by generative AI models at the back end, uh, you know, that uh, with these models referencing databases, uh, right, uh, through blue code, obviously, to be able to retrieve stuff that's relevant for, and for the model to give you uh, an intelligent output, right? So whether it's using your iPhone to detect, uh, you know, an object and figure out, you know, what kind of plant uh, is this, for example, you know, in somebody's garden or, uh, you know, all of that is, uh, you know, embedding based and uh, retrieval rack based as well at this point. So all in one place is what single store delivers. Now, uh, let's talk about ANN indexes and search. So we touch upon this a little briefly, but uh, this is again a, a powerhouse of a capability that a single store uh, unlocks. And uh, so we talk about the various different flavors and uh, you know why this is important, right? Why, 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 what does this get you? So ANN uh, indexes, there's various different types. There's inverted file, IVF, there's the flat variant, there's product quantized. Don't need to worry about a lot of this detail, but I'm just giving a lot of, uh, you know, uh, these pointers. So if you are interested, you can look up stuff later and I'm happy to answer some questions as well later. Uh, you can write to me as well and, you know, uh, talk about if you have questions about single stress as well, we deal with that as well towards the end of Paul and Matt will help me out. And we'll also, uh, you know, get into, uh, if you have any general generative AI question, happy to help with that as well. But IVF is one way to implement ANN um, inverted file. There's the HNSW variant as well, hierarchical navigable small worlds. Uh, this is, uh, you know, again, a very interesting technology. It leads to much faster hierarchical graph-based search compared to IVF in particular. But with single store, you get all of this in one place. That's the thing. And, you know, you can choose and figure out which variant you want, and you're, you're going to be able to implement this, your, your app way easier and much more efficiently. Now, 
why do we want to use ANN search? Uh, like I touched upon earlier briefly, uh, you have large vector sets, right? And when I when we say vector sets, it's essentially terabytes, petabytes of data, and you want to be able to mine that data, look for uh, entries that are semantically similar, for example, that's you know the large vector set part, right? Being able to scale to you know that that level of uh, you know scale, uh, petabytes, uh, petabytes and ter uh, terabytes. Um, and then finally, yeah, you know, there's also these various other as aspects, the interactive response time, which I touched upon earlier. These apps need to be real time, right? You you can't wait for several minutes just for an answer to a question, right? From an LLM like ChatGPT. So we definitely want to look into that. High concurrency, that is very important as well. And ANN does not, uh, is, is a technology that, that doesn't uh, offer perfect recall, which is the approximate part in ANN. Uh, but that works for, you know, uh, most cases, I'd say, you know, very good part of, you know, use cases, uh, much more than, you know, KNN actually, which is why ANN is the way to go with the vector search. Now, we touched upon this as well uh, back in 2017, uh, like I was mentioning earlier, the Euclidean was the preferred distance. Uh, but when you look at high dimensional spaces, which is what vectors are embedded in, uh, there are these other options, uh, specifically dot product or sign similarity as well, that are usually preferred because they scale better to much more than two dimensions or three dimensions that Euclidean is usually used for. Um, Cartesian XY coordinate or XYZ coordinates for 3D data, that's, Euclid that's Euclidean's bread and butter. But if you want to go to, you know, scale to high dimension, uh, you know, spaces dot and pro uh, product and cosine are the way to go. Again, something that single store natively offers. Um, and there's trade-offs between, uh, uh, you know, KNN and ANN AN algorithms and which one offers what. So there's details here as well, but we just want to throw that as a pointer. So you guys know that there's no, uh, uh, you know, one size fits all. you got to figure out which one works for your particular use case. But all, all of these are offered. So that way, you know, you can hit the ground running uh, when you start setting up your uh, backend with single stroke. All right, so we talked about vector type uh, earlier uh, with single store natively offers. I briefly mentioned that, and this is, uh, you know, uh, the slide basically lays some of that groundwork. So earlier you basically use blobs, like I said, right back on my, one of my earlier slides talking about 2017, but right now you got with single store, you got the vector data type, the type that basically enables uh, natively creating these vectors as first class citizens. So you, you, you're able to create these and leverage these naturally, you know, with other parts of your code, with other SQL queries, for example, as you retrieve something using select, you can, you know, make a lot of these updates and whatnot with other kinds of queries. So a lot of this native first class support is what uh, single store enables for vectors. Now, you know, the size of the vector can be mentioned, the data type as well, and the number of bits of floating point uh, bits that we need to use to store this so customization is offered as well. Uh, and this also makes it uh, self-documenting much more readable. Uh, there's also compile time error checking with for length and time mismatch, which is one of the most common issues working with vectors, uh, making sure you're using the right dimensions. So that's also offered. And uh, being able to cast vectors as well. And that, we'll touch upon that in the next slide, I believe is one of the forthcoming slides, being able to cast vectors. Um, we also have the infix operator. That's another thing I wanted to highlight for dot product and uh, the cast part is here as well. Uh, so being able to uh, utilize these vectors natively uh, and be able to cast this in various different ways, uh, you know, and being able to, for example, feed in embedding values directly as you see on the slide and saying that, hey, this is, uh, you know, a vector that, you know, I generated from someplace else from some other part of the code, can we just store this, uh, the, you know, the, the raw data here as, uh, you know, a native vector type. So that's definitely possible. Uh, and, you know, obviously creating a vector as well is something that we've highlighted here. That's, uh, you know, size four in this case with integer type, uh, you know, so you can customize that as well. Need not just be, you know, using floating point 32, which is a standard, but be able to utilize a lot of different, uh, you know, data types as well and uh, create your vector with single store. All right, and this is the casting part that I was mentioning about earlier. So, you know, traditional blobs, uh, vector blobs can be uh, converted to vectors and vectors can be converted to blob formats as well. So both bi-directional capability, 
and this is huge as well. So if you have prior data, I can go here and you know new data can function with other older systems with uh, in the other direction, converting vectors to blobs. Um, and then we have a quick example here as well, where we're basically uh, not just storing our particular, uh, you know, a series of numbers, in this case, raw vector data as a vector, but also normalizing it, which is uh, uh, another very important concept because that enables cosine similarity, which is the length normalized version of dot product. And like I touched upon a couple of slides ago, cosine uh, similarity and dot product are the two preferred ways of, you know, whatever, uh, you know, what have you in, in terms of your system, whether it's an LLM system or diffusion models or any type of other generative AI system, uh, these are the metrics uh, in terms of similarity search and single store offers native support for them. All right, similarity operators, we talked about that. The dot product Euclidean distance is also offered, uh, you know, which like I said, is more traditional, but we have support for across the board for all of these different metrics. So, you know, you can uh, shift gears and uh, utilize other systems that do not support other kinds of, uh, you know, outputs and you'd still be able to interface them with single store. So that's the kind of the broad gamut that uh, single store offers in terms of features. Um, and then we obviously cosine similarity, uh, you know, higher is better and, you know, lower is closer in terms of distance. So that's that aspect as well. Uh, with distance versus cosine similarity. So Euclidean is more uh, on the distance side, obviously, and cosine more on the similarity side. So you want higher, the distance you want lower. Uh, so just that nuance here I uh, wanted to point out. And then next up, wanted to also briefly touch upon uh, the benefits of using single store as your vector database. And we spoke about a bunch of that, there's parallelism, and then you can query your vectors. And, and the best part, hybrid search, which we uh, want to just do a quick time check. And I we have a nice demo for you guys, which I'll walk through, walk you guys through. So that is part of a hybrid search, which is full text search and vector search rolled into one, fused together. Uh, and this is again a technology that enables a lot of search engines right now. So uh, very upcoming and definitely an area that you guys should delve into. Um, and then speed, like I said, latency is important for real time applications. We've got that, and uh, much faster than a lot of the other competitors and. Of, and uh, after having a feature set that is enviable, honestly, with all of this broad uh, range and gamut offered across so many different dimensions. All right. Um, so uh, just want to talk about the free tier as well. And we'll uh, touch upon the hybrid search aspect also that uh, we just spoke about via the demo. Now, the free tier is something that is phenomenal. And I'll tell you why. Um, it, you get a low latency performance, obviously, um, you know, not limited by modality. So being able to, you know, scale this across all kinds of different data, be text, videos, images, audio, time series data, what have you. And being able to utilize, uh, you know, put together multi, multiple different models, they're like creating a multi-model, uh, you know, architecture that is also possible. Uh, so you're, you're limited by your imagination, essentially. And the best part is, you know, $600 in free credits, which is a lot to be able to, you know, set up maybe some of your projects and try things out. And, you know, we'll give you a quick demo of that as well. But, uh, and also the lastly, the HTAP uh, aspect as well, which you talked about earlier, the hybrid transactional and analytical processing capabilities. Uh, that's the feature set, right? In terms of being able to scale across various different uh, aspects and types uh, of what require what what these new generation uh, applications uh, powered by generative AI require. So being able to you know satisfy all of these different requirements for these different backends and models, uh, you got uh, support all across the board. So th these are some of the most important parts. But uh, you know we and we will give you a quick demo of the portal. The next slide has uh, you know a quick overview of what the single store portals look like, and we'll get into the demo aspect as well. But yeah, with the feature set that, that we have on the right, uh, and like I said, the credits and the low latency and uh, support for uh, native support for a lot of these different aspects uh, that are generated way across the board, this is the way to go. So like, yes, like I was mentioning earlier, this is a quick screenshot of the portal and we'll show you some of that as well live, uh, but this is basically how the single store portal looks like. And on the left, you'll see a bunch of different, uh, you know, areas, uh, you know, right from SQL editor to Kai that Akhil spoke about earlier as well. 
uh, monitoring aspects as well. And, you know, notebooks are my favorite, uh, being able to put together, cobble up something, uh, create prototypes, you know, and this is how you guys, you know, should power a lot of your projects, right? Put together some code and be able to run this cell by cell and figure out what's going on. And, you know, single store powers a whole lot of that, right? From databases to actually having your notebooks be run native with uh, native connections to databases, right? Uh, you know, under one roof. So we'll touch upon that so you guys don't have to, you know, uh, fiddle around and, you know, connect uh, to a particular database and such. It's pretty easy. Um, all right. And hybrid search. Again, we spoke about that earlier, and this is a phenomenal technology. So we've got the vector search that we spoke about, and we've got the full text uh, search as well, the lexical search as it's traditionally called, um, and fusing it together, you know, the, basically getting the best of both worlds. So this is, again, uh, something that uh, single store DB unlocks. And again, our demo is based on that. So we'll talk about that. All right, uh, with that, uh, thank you so much. But we uh, we also have, uh, obviously, like Matt mentioned, there's two webinars a week and phenomenal uh, content being put out. So this is the next one, which we spoke about earlier as well. Matt uh, in, uh, highlighted this. So make sure to join this one. And we kind of, this is the time for demos. So, and I want to make sure we have some time for questions as well. So let me move over to the portal. Uh, can you guys still see my screen? I just want to make sure it's visible and- uh... Yes, you might want to bump it up one or two if you can, uh, but I can see it there, perfect. All right, awesome. Yeah, so this is the culmination of what we just spoke about, uh, mitigating hallucinations in your LLM apps. And all of this powered by, you know, the, the awesome feature set uh, and the low latency that single store hybrid search offers. So what we have here is basically a notebook that, and I'll walk you through cell by cell. There are certain aspects where we're basically taking in a, a good amount of data and we're creating embedding. So I've got some of that run uh, for you guys. And all of the outputs are here so I can walk you through the, the cells and show you what uh, aspects uh, different aspects are involved here, right? So we're just setting up libraries here. We're using uh, sentence transformers here for embedding creation, which is uh, a pretty important library right now. That's the preferred way to create embeddings. People use Bird, but sentence transformers takes things to the next level. Uh, and what that basically gives you is essentially uh, embeddings for your entire with with enough context for entire sentences rather than words. So this is the you know uh, uh, model that we're using MPNet, which is you know the number one model right now for sentence embeddings. Uh, we have some. Uh, so I have basically got the uh, output here, and we'll walk you through cell by cell, right? So what we're doing is once we set up the embeddings, uh, we want to basically be able to uh, uh, load data or compare these embeddings, like we touched upon earlier, with our query input and find and retrieve embed uh, entries that are relevant, that are that have a good amount of match. And we'll show you uh, how we do the hybrid search aspect that single search unlocks with both the keyword match and the semantic match. So we talk about that. But now this is the actual embedding creation part. That was just a quick setup. Now we are basically using a news data set and we uh, you know download that data with standard boilerplate code, uh, nothing too fancy here read a CSV that says a pandas data frame, uh, and that gets over to DF standard stuff. And here you'll see some of these examples, right? So we're basically uh, showing you 2000 uh, rows of news data, right? With some labels, of course, uh, some genres and you know uh, other description, other aspects as well. So this is a multi-column data set, obviously. And then what we do here is that we convert the data text to a dictionary. Again, nothing uh, too fancy here. And you'll see the output right here, the title description label. Now here is where you set up the database. So you'll see this is you know, so efficient compared to you know, other implementations where you have to set up you know, your uh, sockets and connect and whatnot. And so you know, you're setting up your single store database. We already have uh, you know, a database created here, which this notebook then connects to just seamlessly. Uh, and then we start setting up the relevant, you know, columns here within the database, right? So the title description, genre that we just spoke about earlier. And note that we have an embedding column here as well, right? This is where we'll be generating embeddings. And, uh, you know, a lot of this will feed into the single store uh, DB. Um, 
that you know and basically what we touched upon earlier right storing a lot of these embeddings and then looking them up in an approx approximate way now descriptions uh you know these uh, have to be encoded because this is what we are going to be comparing against this is the column that we'll be uh, comparing the input or the query against to be able to retrieve so you'll see the output says there's 2000 entries and the embedding size uh, once you run the model.encode is going to be is 768, which is standard, but also has 768 dimensional embeddings. But note that single store is not limited to some of these, uh, you know, uh, th there's no limit in terms of, you know, the embedding size. There's embeddings with thousands of dimensions right now, pretty popular with major models like, you know, OpenAI's model, for example, uh, and single store works efficiently and flawlessly with that as well. So it's future proof in that sense, right? So you, your projects and apps are not going to be limited, uh, you know, in that sense. If you want to scale tomorrow, we have it figured out for you. Um, next up, you know, we're just setting up data in a particular format, merging embedding values into rows. Uh, and then just, you know, this is a quick output of, you know, the embedding stored as uh, rows. And you'll see these floating point numbers that I spoke about earlier and look at these 760 dimensional numbers, which we've stored. Uh, for each entry uh, in the database. Next up, we start populating all of these embeddings that we've just generated within the database. So you'll see the insert into queries. Uh, again, that's run. And uh, lastly, we've got the semantic search aspect. And uh, we spoke about this earlier, right? So this is the vector-based search, also called semantic search. And uh, you give it an input, say Aussie, and it's able to figure out that it means, you know, it, you're referring to Australian and, you know, it can retrieve elements that not just say, or that not just have the exact word Aussie, but also references to Australian, Australian. Uh, and you'll see some of that output here. Uh, so this is the magic. This is the superpower that vector search unlocks, being able to do that approximate search by encoding the meaning, the, the semantic aspects of the query, rather than the exact or the textual match uh, which a lot of traditional search, uh, for example, even in you know your browser right right here, if you command F for Aussie, you're just going to see Aussie, you're not going to see Australian. So that's the exact search part, right? But this is the magic here with embeddings and vector databases and single store. So this is uh, when you run your print results, you'll see all of these results. And like I said, right, you'll see Australians, you'll see Sydney. Uh, you know, so a lot of uh, the the approximate matching here because it's encoding the meaning and a score as well. So you know what kind of a match there was, right, with your input query. And know that we just searched for Aussie and not the whole uh, sentence. But if you have a huge sentence as well saying, uh, you know, last few cricket matches uh, that uh, maybe India played with Australia, for example, it's going to be able to encode that as well. Why? Because we used a sentence embedding model earlier. And that, again, works seamlessly with single stroke. So you can do sentence level matches as well, not just word level matches. Now, the hybrid search part that we touched upon earlier, that's the fusion of the two, lexical and semantic. So what we do is we basically take scores from both uh, you know, uh, towers, uh, the hybrid tower and the, the lexical tower. And these are just individual tracks and individual code bases that run. And then you fuse them together, the fuse the score together. And then you return hybrid searches and figure out which has the best match for you, which is based on the combined score. So that's that. And then finally, we have some cleanup code, but this is the, you know, the, the, the final end result, right? And because this is what tells you the match between the lexical part and the semantic part and fuse that, fuse the scores together and select your top K relevant entries that get retrieved and then put back into the prompt for the LLM and that powers RAG. So this is the heart of the system. This is what enables RAG. So that's what I had for you guys. Hopefully that this gave you guys an idea about all of these various different concepts and technologies that enable, uh, you know, LLMs these days, um, uh, especially particularly the rack part. Obviously there's a whole world out there in terms of generative AI, but uh, th this is the heart of the system. And again, not limited to LLMs in particular, like I said, you can scale this to VLMs, vision language models and other kinds of models as well. So that brings awesome. me to the end of my presentation today. I love um, it. Thank you, Aman. I know we've got we've got uh, Akmal's hands are probably bloody from all of the typing he's done to the questions. I think we probably have time for one question. Akmal, do you see something that's either unanswered or just like uh, a popular one that that you had to answer a couple times during the session? Um, I think there's a great question here from Martin. Uh, if I read this quickly, it's it's a, it's a 
bit of a sentence. I know we're at the top of the hour, but my, and what, what Martin said is what I didn't see in the presentation so far is how we deal with prompt injections, weird prompts that are meant to create output that shouldn't be generated by the LLM. So mm -hmm. the question is what pre-processing techniques and prompt engineering techniques we can use to make sure the LLM output stays within the context of the knowledge base. I thought that was a great question. Um, and then I think more generally, there's a few others as well uh, that um, uh, talk much more in terms of, uh, I, I think, the kind of strategy. I mean, the LLM is only good to a point. It's a question of you, what, what else do you need to build around that in order to ensure that you, you kind of get your, your answers that you're looking for. You know, you're, you're kind of expecting the technology to do everything for you, right? That's not going to work that way. Not yet, anyway. <laughs> yeah, but, but I can touch briefly on Martin's question, uh, which I found particularly interesting as well. I just saw the question. Uh, prompt injection is, uh, you know, kind of a parallel area where you feed in, uh, you know, uh, strategically oriented uh, prompts to the model and the model responds, uh, you know, uh, to it and thereby violates some of its guardrails and instructions. So that's the injection part. And the best part here is uh, that uh, you can set up guardrails at the output of the model, which are also could also be powered by databases. Uh, the back end to make sure that the model's saying something that is relevant, correct, and isn't violating guidelines. Uh, and this can also be powered by vector databases, looking up a lot of what the model outputs versus what the database is saying in terms of uh, information that is relevant and correct. Again, uh, an area where single store uh, plays a big role because that is a vector database at the end of the day. So whether it's the input or the output, uh, you know, we've got things covered for you. Uh, but this is a whole uh, different world. There's a lot of research and prompt injection, um, you know, and adversarial attacks is how we also like to call it. Uh, but again, uh, something where vector databases play a significant role as well. Great. I know we're over time here by a little bit. So yeah. before I announce the AirPods winner, real quick reminder on Monday, we're doing how to build Gen AI applications on MySQL data. Come watch Akmal's session on Monday. I just put the link in the chat one more time. Hope to see you there if you register. Uh, and then today's AirPods winner goes to Magdalena Nyga, uh, business analyst at Hertz. Congrats, Magdalena. Thanks for joining. If that's not you, don't give up. We're going to announce one more AirPods winner by the end of the day uh, to someone who has tried out uh, this GitHub that Aman shared. It's in the uh, it's in the chat. We'll also put it in the email. You'll get a copy of the recorded session from today, as well as that GitHub link. Try it out. Hopefully you'll be our next AirPods winner. Thank you so much, Aman, for an amazing session. You're a great speaker. Um, tell your wife congrats again. And, uh, you know, congrats to your family on a very exciting weekend. Thanks, Akmal, as usual, for handling audience Q&A. And thank you to our audience for joining us. Thank Have you a great so much folks for having me and thanks to the audience for the awesome questions and the awesome session. Love it. Bye bye. Looking thanks. forward to seeing you guys in a future session. Sounds good. Yeah. Bye bye. Yeah. bye, -bye.